your source for everything paranormal. Para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. everyone this is jerry with the <laughs> uh, I'll try that again this is jerry with the calling along with kimberly juarez how you doing kim kim i think Hello, my name is stephanie and i'm with the <laughs> gathering radio show and i am here for kimberly juarez <laughs> god you're just no fun why can't you just go with the flow <laughs> Jeez, jeez. So um, people would say, wow, Kim really sounds like Stephanie tonight. <laughs> yep. And then they would call me a liar. So that's right. OK. Right. Um, let's see. So um, what did. Oh, yeah. Cece said snow, thunderstorms. What the heck are you guys doing back there? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought terrible. I thought maybe we were done with the precipitation. I knew it was supposed to be cold for the next couple of days, but really it's supposed to rain tomorrow too. I mean, aren't we done with this now? I'm just done. I'm done. <laughs> we need some nice weather. She just showed her fist and slammed her foot on the floor. That means she's done. She's yeah. completely done. Oh, here comes Darla. <laughs> awesome. They're slowly coming in. Yeah. So um, tonight's show was to be about haunted places. Now, it still is, but there's some interesting things that have happened. Um, I actually, I have a friend of mine. Uh, hey, Snook. Uh, Darla, or Darla. Yeah, well, Darla's a friend of mine, too, um, <laughs> named Eden. And Eden... Uh, well, I'm not going to tell you a lot about her. I'm going to tell you up to it, okay? So she found this rich guy, and this rich guy uh, fell in love with her and stuff like that. They both did. And she said, or he said, let's do the honeymoon first. And she's like, what? You know, he goes, because I want to go all these places with you, and then at the end, we're going to go to the honeymoon and she's like okay you know yeah that sounds good to me i'll i'll definitely do that so uh they went on their honeymoon now this is a weird honeymoon they wanted to go to all different haunted locations around the world okay so her first stop well it worked out to be their first stop was um uh, a place in canada it was called the, I do believe it's Beniff Springs Hotel. Banff. Uh, Banff. Is it? What? Banff Springs. It's up in, near Banff, Calgary, oh, right? Okay. Uh, it just yeah. says, yeah. Banff. B-A-N-F-F. B-A-N-F-F. Yeah, Banff. Okay. Well, anyway, so uh, they go out there. Now, that place has a lot of dark history. Uh, many guests repeat, uh, reported seeing ghost uh, sightings along with Sam the Bellman, who uh, continues to do his job after his death in 1975. So they went to this place. They're having a fabulous time. They are seeing things that actually she got really scared and almost wanted to call the whole thing off. But her husband-to-be was like, no, we're going to stick with it. We're going to do this. So... um, so they did. They they went. They had a great time and stuff. Uh, they didn't see a lot of stuff, but they did have uh, a deal that happened in that elevator twice. Number one, uh, they were getting in the elevator when they first got there, and uh, 
uh, he, she said, what floor are we on? He said, we're staying in room number 317 or something like that. And even before anything could happen, three was pushed, up they went. That's amazing that it went by itself. So which means that Sam the bellman is uh, definitely doing his job still. Um, they seen a couple things that they couldn't really say what they were and stuff. They felt a lot of like really bad things that happened and stuff. And uh, so they stayed there for three days. And as they were leaving, they they were getting all their stuff onto the elevator. They forgot something. Without even touching the door, she ran back to the room and the elevator just stayed. It didn't. It didn't move. It didn't. They even pushed the button to go down to the main floor. She comes out. She gets in. It shuts, goes down to the first floor. I mean, isn't that amazing, Steph? Wouldn't you, like, freak out if something like that happened? So, Harry, what was his name? Harry. Harry the Bellman was there. Uh, Sam. Sam. Sorry. Sam the Bellman. Yep. So... Then they took off from their flight for there in a place that she wanted to go so bad, Japan, oh. the suicide forest. I was going to say, did he go, they go to, which I, I can't remember what this Japanese it's, uh, name of it is. Oh, my God. It's um, something. Ha ha. Okay. <laughs> Okagara. Something <laughs> yeah, like something that. like that. Something yeah. Like that. So they went there and uh, they were saying that it's it's actually on the outside. It's quite beautiful. But walking into it and feeling the doom and stuff, uh, they actually walked quite a bit into the forest first uh, before they they turned around and came out. But they did sit down. They did, you know, try to, you know, uh, not conjure up, but try to talk with people there. Their voice recorder, they turned on when they were in there, and they put it down, and it just, boom, stopped right now. Batteries sucked dry. That's when they started getting that feeling and everything, and they left. Uh, they had a great time, you know. Um, they knew that there was 500 suicides, and, and a lot of people thought that there was demons up there. When they got back into the hotel that they were staying in and, and People, you know, asked, uh, did you get to go out and see a lot of our sites? And they said, well, we went to uh, the suicide forest. People didn't want nothing to do with them. Yeah. That was Japanese. They pretty much turned their back to them and everything else. I mean, it's their job, you know, to, to answer their questions, but they were not over friendly after that. You know, so that I thought was kind of interesting you know um so then uh they took off and they went to uh where's the next place okay this is the big one so they stayed there for a while um well actually the last place they went to i'm going to tell you the last place um well i can't tell you the last place yet because it's going to ruin the whole thing how many places are there on this list well they they did uh five places Mm -hmm. okay the last place uh, was quite amazing um, itself. But um, anyway, so uh, they went to some other places and stuff. Not a lot happened. We'll just say it like that. But one place that th- she's always wanted to go to um, was in India. I do believe it's pronounced Odisha, O-D-I-S-H-A. It was horrible there it was the uh, smallpox it had uh, ridden over everything uh, in the place they um, the people that uh, were actually building the place uh, it was called hold on hold on Um, oh my gosh come on Jerry here it is Uh, it's called um, Oh, my gosh. Here it is. Uh, I'm going to say it wrong. Uh, Jatan, J-A-T-A-N, Nagar Palace. Mm -hmm. And what's the deal with this palace is the guy that was building the palace, it was a 100-room palace built by Prince um, Pratap uh, Dev, who forced his laborers and tortured them 
in special rooms. Uh, it is said that many of them died during the construction and their spirits still live within the, the, the place. The building is ruined and now became one of the most haunted places in India. And they were able to go to that. Um, and they checked it out and it was the creepiest thing they said because they would hear screams at times. They would uh, get complete you know, fear just happening with them uh, in everything. It was just horrible. But she started getting sick and uh, really sick. And when she they left there and everything, she wasn't feeling well. And she they said, well, you know, you got two more stops left. And she's like, okay, I'm going to do it and stuff. Uh, the last place that uh, they went to, was the um, oh the island of the dolls? Mm. Uh, they went to that. They they paid dearly to go on that island, only with two others. They brought dolls to hang around. The dolls that they hung around and stuff were ripped down in no time. Mm. It was like it wasn't the type of doll that you know the uh, the girl that actually was found. Uh, 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 drowned and everything, you know. Her father kind of hung up dolls and to, or somebody found a doll. Where or is this island of the dolls? It's um, in Mexico. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Now, it was intended to be a tourist destination. Legend says a girl was um, found mysteriously drowned in the on the island uh, by its caretaker, Don Julian Santana Barrera. Uh, he found a doll nearby, and assuming that it was hers, he hung it from the tree uh, to show respect. Uh, he was apparently haunted by the spirit of the girl after that and started hanging more dolls in an attempt to appease her. Um, people say that dolls are now possessed by her spirit. Some even claim they hear dolls whispering in the uh, to each other according to the web island's website and which brings up a point that they started hearing whispers and the whispers that were coming to her is you're not well you're hmm. not well that's what it kept saying all the time so she started getting sicker so then they decided they were going to go to the last place well you know uh, you should never do paranormal stuff if you're sick period oh well, she was doing it when she got sick in India, yeah. Yeah. you know. So she um, she went to uh, they went to their last place, which was the Stanley Hotel. Now, in the Stanley Hotel, they didn't come across anything whatsoever. You know, she kind of felt that this place was just not haunted. They didn't stay in none of the, the big haunted rooms and all that stuff and everything. Uh, so, you know, they figured they didn't see nothing. When they were leaving, uh, this woman that uh, worked there, they figured, uh, asked them, uh, did you guys get married? And they said, uh, yes. You know, we got married the night before we came here and everything, which that was the deal. You know, they're going to get married and stay in the Stanley. And she said, oh, very good for you. You know, you come back any time that you want. And they said, well, thank you. You work here? And she said, yes. My name is Mrs. Wilson. Mm -hmm. You can call me Mrs. Wilson. And she walked away. Mrs. Wilson is one of the people that actually died there. Mm. Yeah, in 1911, she uh, there was a lightning strike um, on the the lights that uh, uh, they were uh, she was lighting and stuff, and it, it blew up, and she broke both of her ankles and stuff, and she ended up in time dying. But uh, it was unbelievable that uh, that happened. So now at this point. They left and stuff. Um, they found out about that woman when they called back and said they might be coming back. And uh, they really liked that one woman. Uh, and when they mentioned her name, they're like, she's dead. Hmm. She was a ghost. And they said they never felt anything strange about her, which, hmm. you know, you figure they would because ghosts and stuff. But so anyway, she gets back, she goes to the doctor and stuff like that and asks her what's going on. They pulled up her shirt and she had these marks all over her body. 
And they, the first thing they said is that, have you been any place, you know, out of the country? And she said, yeah, they named the places and stuff. And then they named the towns that she was in. Um, in India, that place that was haunted was also hit by massive smallpox. And she shows all of the symptoms of smallpox. But like years ago, right? Not today, because smallpox has been eradicated, right? They've only been married for a year. So, so last year. Hold on a second. So last year, she it never developed all the way or anything like that, but it hung with her for a long time. They never gave her any kind of special medication or anything. It wasn't smallpox, but it was close to being smallpox. Hmm. So which brings up why um, Kimberly's not here. Mm. Kimberly got super sick at first she started acting like she was drunk at the Humbird mm-hmm. and yes Sarge I'm talking about the Humbird now <laughs> and um, what happened I don't know really what happened you were with her when it happened well so what happened was we had an, a public investigation there this past Saturday night and it was Minnesota Para Connections first event together so it's four teams for those of you listening who don't know this so it's them, Squatchers, Cat Paranormal, and Search for Spirits. And so we decided to try a new thing. Well, it was my idea, and I kind of forced it on everybody. But the girls were up for it, so we split into two teams, and it was girls on one team and guys on the other. And it was pretty evenly split. There was one, I think you guys had one more person on your team than we did ours. But yeah, we were downstairs in the bar. And she was fine until we were down there because we did a lot of, uh, we were upstairs for, gosh, a long time, like about an hour and a half, I think. And we got down there and we were talking to one of the spirits we feel, I don't know, I can't wait to review the evidence because, you know, it feels like there was somebody there, but we don't really know. But, and then we were naming different alcohols, right? So we would all name an alcohol and she was the only one who didn't and she was really quiet and she had been you know, real talkative upstairs in the hotel. And um, then all of a sudden she said, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I think I need to get out of here. And so that's when I, I brought her, I came up and told you guys, and then you and I brought her outside. And I thought maybe she'd been slimed or something. That's what we call when a spirit will get at you. And, but she's an experienced investigator that shouldn't happen to but it can happen to all of us and um we did what we normally do kind of cleared her up and and grounded her and stuff and then we went back upstairs and then you sat with her you sat out of the rest of the investigation and sat with her in the sitting area off of our suite that we had um and i thought she was fine the next day she seemed like she was okay she said she felt much better you know, and then we drove home. And then I guess that's the last either one of us heard from her until today, right? Yeah. Well, I did talk with her last night and everything else. And oh. She was saying that she wasn't feeling too well. And so that's why that gave me the idea uh, to call up. And Oh, by the way, my friend Eden is blind. That's oh. the one thing that happened to her while she was getting these, you know, getting sick and stuff. And that was one of the things that can happen when you have smallpox is that you can be blind. Mm. Yeah. So it's weird. So with Kimberly, the symptoms that she has right now are pretty close to diphtheria or smallpox, you know, the eye mattering and everything, but she doesn't have any things, you know, on her. It's such a bizarre place. You guys, I mean, (laughs) It's such a weird place. Now that we're talking about it, something's going to happen where the show is going to go down or something (laughs) like that. Yeah, Yeah, because it it does happen like that. Um, Very, very, very strange. And I thought for sure that Darlowski there would have been there. I really thought she would drive up there and want to stay. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that is so rude. Are we keeping you awake, Terry? Uh, yeah, it's it's usually my nap time on Wednesdays <laughs> between <laughs> seven and eight. <laughs> but um, I just that's just crazy, you know. It could and be she just 
might be sick. You know what I mean? It could have yeah. nothing to do with this. You know, you can't. You know, you can't attach them to each other. Oh, but. no, no, no. I'm just saying that, you know, I mean, take a look at what happened with Eden. I mean, all those different things happening to her but and she stuff. She was in some pretty bizarre places and pretty exotic places. You know, I don't think right. Harvard, Wisconsin is actually an exotic place. You know what I mean? But you never, never, know, never know what can happen. We never know. But, um, but. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't know what the symptoms are for diphtheria and smallpox. So both of those were prevalent in the 1800s there, which is why they used the hotel as a kind of uh, hospital, you know. But, yep. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, it was just there really before. But she's been there before, right? Cause right, but it doesn't mean that. Event. Yeah, but it doesn't mean just because you've been there once, you know, that. Uh, uh, that True. You know, it could happen. Darla's saying, sorry, Jer, been busy with mom. Well, I hope mom's okay. Yeah. She's such sure. a cute little peanut. Yeah. Mom. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I hope she gets well fast. I noticed she's not, she must not be listening or online or whatever. So I hope she's resting. But, you know, when we picked, when we left early Saturday morning, she said she had a really bad headache, remember? And she thought maybe it was caffeine related because she hadn't had any coffee yet. But it could have been the start of something, you know, it could have been the start of whatever the issue is. It could have been. You know, the thing is that that it's just like me, that her eye was getting mattery. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you had that, too. Did it go away? Yeah. Oh, it it finally went away. My eye feels so much better. But it's a lot of hot packs putting on them, you know, so that works really good. That and once in a while, eye drops. But I know you're not supposed to put nothing in your eye. When your eye is all mattery and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Wow, her mom's going to be 93 in a couple weeks. How's that? That Wow. Awesome sauce. I love it. Yeah, Yeah. and I remember just a few years ago, she was coming to all the Squatcher stuff, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same with the Sim stuff. Remember that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, she was there too the last. last supernatural conversation you guys had yeah yeah so yeah see, you really don't know that what type of spirits yeah. you're dealing with uh so maybe it has something was something not good. Not good. yeah you i agree with that i agree steve there's whenever somebody and you know it's funny because People, regular people and stuff like that, they go on these different hauntings and places and stuff. And then some will actually trespass and everything. And then they're like, I don't feel good. Well, you shouldn't have gone, dummy. You should have done your research first on what's there so that you can, you know, be ready for it and try to do what you can not to get it. Because you can. I mean, you definitely can have something happen. There, I'll get down off my soapbox. There you go. You can (laughs) But, and it seems like, you know, um, I've never been afraid of the spirits there, but there is that one room, the pink room that has something strange. Although, although Anna and, um, can't think of his name now that stayed in there. Oh, uh, Brian. Brian didn't, nothing happened when they were there. And he said that he was up till 530 (laughs) waiting for something (laughs) and nothing happened. So, you know, I don't know. It's kind of, kind of crazy. But I mean, they're they're you know they don't perform on command, so <laughs> that's that's true. That's big time true. Hard to say, <laughs> but um, yeah, no. I I hope she gets better, and I hope she takes care of herself and stays home from work. And you know, I think a lot's been all of us are kind of worn thin. I think we all have too many too many rods or too many sticks in the fire not getting enough sleep we're not eating well and i think all of that contributes to all of these sicknesses yep that is true that is definitely true you gotta you gotta keep your body and everything else even though you're you know yeah. you're alive you gotta keep it healthy or something or somewhat healthy i mean look at me for god's sakes <laughs> no don't look at me <laughs> i am the epitome of what you're not supposed to do oh my goodness <laughs> well you know it's just we're all busy and but we need to, we definitely need to take time out to that's why i always say my phone goes off a lot of times at like eight thirty at night eight thirty or 9 because you just need to shut down you know yep. um so 
Yes, I will say, take care of yourself. And this week, you know, last night on the gathering, I was talking about the um, the astrology for this week. And they said, one of the things they said was, we need to take care of each other this week because there's a lot of crazy things going on with the planets and Pisces. You know, it could be something super good, but it also could be something that's, you know, we need to take care of each other, you know, and there's a full moon on Saturday, which is awesome. And I think that will be very helpful for all of us. Um, but yeah, we just need to chill, chill, yeah. chill. Where is the, where's the full moon supposed to be in what part of the sky? Well, the full moon rises in the east and sets in the west. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> yes. Just oh. like the sun. <laughs> oh, shut up. So, no. When it's full, it doesn't rise until after the sunset. But as you know, when it's when it's quarter full, half full, sometimes it rises um, before the sun sets. So, yes. So that is Saturday night. Well, let's see here. Oh. Saturday. Oh, sat. Wait, this coming Saturday? Yep. Doesn't yep. show a full moon, Steph. Yep. So it's really full. No, Friday no, no. Night, Saturday it night. It doesn't show a full moon. Oh, it is full. It's not. Well, go ahead and check on the internet, Jerry. It's full moon. And it's, well, I am checking it's full, on the internet. It's the full pink moon this this weekend because there's so many pink flowers that happen this time of year. Full pink moon, huh? Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. And that is uh, coming Saturday evening. I'll be darned. Yes, you don't oh, believe me. No, no. You I don't I believe just thought, me. Ask the dishes. Uh, Steph, mm-hmm. now listen to me <laughs> very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to see if it was going to be cloudy or not. Oh, probably. You know, so we can be it's able to see cloudy. it. It's always cloudy up here. Oh, okay. But no, it's not supposed to be cloudy. <laughs> it's what I'm trying to tell you. But I, I just took a look at it, so... Let's see now. It says on Saturday, April 16th, a pink full moon will grace the skies as an Easter treat for stargazers. April's full moon is the first of the spring season, signified by being called pink moon. So there you go. All right. What does it mean spiritually? Ooh. Um, Libra energy will help us balance out Aries' adventurous spirit and get some rest during this exciting time of the year. Oh, right. So what do you think of that, Steph? So do you think when you go to places and it's full moon, do you think there's more um, haunted stuff going on or less? I think they can use that full moon energy to manifest easier. You think so? I do think so. I would not, although as a Bigfoot researcher, we have learned that the full moon is not a good time to go Bigfoot, to go Bigfoot, because that they're not as active as they are other times of the month, which is interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. We've actually been out there like, at night, overnight on the full moon, thinking we'll get a lot more activity because of the of, of the energy of the full moon. There's almost nothing. And other researchers have told me they think it's because it's too bright out, you know, and they kind of just kind of hunker down when it's the full moon. Hmm. Just curiosity. Have you ran into any places that uh, people say you shouldn't go because it's paranormally active when you're out looking for the big man himself? Here's the thing. I don't think there's a whole lot of Bigfoot Bigfoot researchers out there who are also paranormal people and paranormal investigators. So, uh, you know, I think the number is growing the more we talk about it. But um, I don't I'm thinking there's not a lot of intuitive sensitives out there looking or they for sure would find all the because there's so much paranormal that we run into in the woods all the time, you know. Right. So, I don't know. Maybe that's why people are afraid of the woods, right? Maybe they sense things and then they get scared. Well, remember, we had that uh, a couple people on our team that uh, actually wouldn't go in the woods. And it was was not because of Bigfoot. It was because of UFOs. Yes. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I felt kind of bad for him, too, because, I mean, wow. 
I think the big man will say either Santa. business and be afraid of anything because you're just you're just not going to do well. You know. Oh yeah, that's true. You know, like well, you can be afraid of spiders though. That's okay, <laughs> and dolls and, and snakes. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Even mice. You know, those sometimes they're kind of cute, but you know. All right, it's time to take a break. <laughs> Everybody's going, yeah, we need a break from you, Jerry. (laughs) All right, we'll be right back in two minutes. If you're looking for a truly unique podcast experience, we have you covered. Spirit by You with C.J. Dunham airs live from the Third Coast in Southeast Texas on Tuesday and Fridays at midnight Eastern Time, covering Creole folklore and folk magic to strange paranormal activity to new equipment for the field. C.J. Dunham is a Catholic swamp witch, a devotee to our Mother Mary in the Trinity, a true believer in our Lord, the Holy Ghost, and Christ. Peace be with your spirit and the spirits by you. Hey, Heidi, have you listened to The Calling lately? Why, yes, Steph, I have. It's really good. Have you? Absolutely. It's what I would say is a wild and woolly affair. So does that mean it's a wild and woolly Wednesday show? (laughs) Well, I definitely think that that's true. So you know we listen, since The Calling is the sibling show to our show, The Gathering. Listen to The Calling Radio Show with Jerry and Kimberly Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on the Para-X Radio Network. Shout out to Shauna and congratulations on her new podcast, Exploring the Paranormal Perspective. You'll hear some amazing guests like me, whatever, paranormal and true crime stories, and more. Catch her Wednesdays at 8 Central on the Para-X Radio Network. Your source for everything paranormal, Para-X. And we're back. This is Jerry with the calling. And, you know, if you just joined us, Shauna... Then you haven't heard the first part of the show, so what you can do is um, actually go to uh, tomorrow afternoon or evening, uh, go to www.thecallingradioshow.com, and you can listen to the show there, or you get an option. You can also go to YouTube at uh, (laughs) youtube.com, The Calling Radio Show, and you can listen to it there, too. And Para-X has so many shows, you guys. I say this every week, and I hope you guys take advantage of it because there's some great entertainment here. It's almost like, oh, what is that place? Um, Oh, well, it's great entertainment. Right after my show, you have Shauna's show, Geeks Paranormal. Check it out. It's pretty cool. You got Steph's show on Tuesday. It's The Gathering. The Gathering. The Gathering. Or wait a minute. The Gathering. (laughs) Anyway, they're great. Heidi and Steph have a great old time. (laughs) There's a little uh, little secret in there. And uh, if you guys know uh, know it, um, you know, don't tell the one. Anyway, um, and have a good time. But there's like tons of different shows that are just unbelievable. Um, and you know, like everything, there's always one ugly one too. But we won't discuss that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, yeah. so let's uh, let's keep going on here. Let's don't talk about the ugly show. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, now the CB, look at it right there, Steph. Look at that. Look at it. Steve uh, just asked, anyone remote viewed Bigfoot? I would say absolutely not. I think Bigfoot is interdimensional. I'm pretty sure that you cannot remote view Bigfoot. And I know there is some people out there that truly believe it can be done. I just don't see it. I mean, there's even some that say that they um, remote viewed uh, giants. And when they tried to show, people tried to show me how you can uh, remote view 
giants. Um, you know, there's nothing there. I don't know what the heck they're looking at, you know. Well, and these uh, people say these things, but where's the proof? Where's the evidence? What do they find? Absolutely nothing. Exactly. And even, here's my point. Even if, even if you could remote view a Bigfoot, wouldn't you have to actually go where he is to get evidence? That's true. I mean, a person can remote view until they're blue in the face. Yeah. But and and Steve, don't don't think I'm I'm, you know, um, just pointing at you and saying this. It's it's a great question because yeah. a lot of people do ask about that. But in my beliefs and in Steph's beliefs, um, you know, it it just doesn't. I don't think you can do it with that. And like I said, I know somebody that said that they could remote view giants and. They gave it a shot, and they showed me something that they claim was giant, and I'm like, um, what? You know, because I just don't understand it. And there's a lot of people that decide that doing uh, remote viewing takes place to actually getting out there and looking for things, be it Bigfoot, be it ghosts, uh, be it aliens and stuff, Um, and it's – there's not been one case that can be shown that remote viewing really, really works. Um, and it's, it's not that it's a tough, touchy subject cat. It's, uh, it's, it's just, there's just, you know, there's so many things that are just so, you know, it's, it's people want it to happen. And that would be great. People say squatch uh, build stick structures, but don't sure. show evidence of big footprints around them. Just okay. saying. And that I can agree with, but at the same time, too, some of these stick structures are formed in such a way that I don't believe that humans can actually do it. No. You know, there's no, it's yeah. it's weird because then, you know, Steve, like uh, it, it actually comes into – the vortex and the portal uh, theories that are out there because with that actually pulling stuff to go through, then, you know, certain things are made, but, you know, you can kind of tell it's not a man-made type thing or an, even an animal made type thing. So, you know, I, I, I will clearly say this and that when we're out in the field, we do find a lot of, odd things a lot of odd structures we find lots of um lots of arches with a lot of energy underneath that i feel are portals and what we have said is it is thought that bigfoot creates these structures and from every researcher i've ever talked to this is what i have been taught so this is what i've said but i have never once said bigfoot made that structure what i will say is did bigfoot make that structure maybe we don't know until we actually see him with their eyeballs right. in one. You know? Right. You know, I mean, I've, I've seen Bigfoot. I, I, I've i seen things that, you know, I don't know how to put it into words of things that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've, I've, um, I've seen things that, um, you know, of these stick structures and stuff like that, you know, oh, he had to have made those. No, because there's nothing... Nobody has seen it yet. Nobody's got right. any photograph or video or anything that actually shows him doing it. You know, that's just like, too, like somebody holding up a feces and saying, this is Bigfoot feces. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, you're not wearing gloves, you know, no. and it's there's no complete proof of that. Now, there is one person out there. I got to say this. I just learned of this and I'm trying to get him. To come on our show. I'm not going to tell you who he is yet. Not until he says no. <laughs> or until he says yes. But um, he has proof that there is scat that they picked up here in Minnesota. And they've tied that scat with what's in Oregon. And is it possibly Bigfoot? Because nobody can say who, what animal has made this. But how could that one animal be here in Minnesota and be in Oregon at the same time? And it has a primate link in it. I find that to be extremely interesting. 
And uh, Steph, actually, I was going to ask you to come on the show when I find it. Of course, I'd have the Squatchers on um, to you so that you can talk to them too and everything. So if that is real, you know, I mean, like I say, I've always got to see the evidence on this. I need to, no, well, not the evidence, but the proof mm-hmm. to see this, you know, if it is really real. And if it is, that's fantastic. But at the same time, you know, um, you know, some of these people, they just want to go and uh, and go find them and make it public. Why? Right. right. You know, get your proof and everything. That's yeah. fine. But, yeah. you know, you don't need to have, you know, the 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 body. No, you know? no. And here's the other thing is, um, you know, there is a difference because people do make structures that oftentimes resemble these structures that we find deep in the woods. The difference is the ones that we find in the woods are like huge. And I can't imagine even men carrying these timbers around. Some of them are smaller, but, and they have twisted limbs. Like these limbs have been twisted off the trees. You know, it's like, I don't think people can really do that. And the other thing is, is they'll have trees that they've pushed together like the one that we typically see out in our research area that we call the big hug. I mean, those trees have actually been kind of pushed to grow that way. You know, it's very interesting. And would people do that? I'm not really sure. I kind of don't think so, you know, but you know, even in the park by me, there's a structure up by the owl's nest that was built by kids or people there. You can tell Uh, there's, there's a big difference, but yeah, I mean, I think you could, you just got to know, and there's usually other things there as well. There's usually like arches there at the same time and the X marks the spot. And, um, there's a series of things usually that makes us think it could be something supernatural and not here with us, not us. And we have, we have seen lights, Steve, when we've been out looking for Bigfoot and we have had experiences at night where we really feel like it was Bigfoot, but we, it was dark. We couldn't see. None of our cameras were, you know, pointing at this. We had thermal cameras. We had infrared cameras. We had rocks being thrown on us. If it would have been any kind of an animal, they would have shown up on those cameras and nothing was showing up yet. We heard something thrashing through the, through the weeds, like a, a foot, a foot or two away from us. And then we suddenly felt like we were being surrounded. And then once we dropped tobacco and said a prayer and said, we're not going to hurt you. We're just here to see what's going on. It left, you know? Um, But of course we didn't get any pictures because we couldn't see them with our eyes. Maybe we should have taken a bunch of pictures. Probably should have. But at that same time though, we did see lights up at the top of the trees. So what was that all about? I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. Right. Well, now, Steph, didn't you have something happen to you um, that you guys were driving or something like that? And then all of a sudden it was like a huge beast with red eyes was standing in front of your car and you guys got really scared. What was it that you seen? I don't remember that. (laughs) It was a raccoon. It was a fox. It was a fox. It was a fox. (laughs) You know what? And here's the first thing. We laugh at ourselves all the time because every once in a while this happens. And then we all laugh like mad. You know, we tell the story because it's funny. Um, We're not ashamed, you know, and I'm not ashamed to say I've been very scared out there in the woods at the same time because I've been afraid of this big thing walking around in the woods near me. Um, But we still go back and do it. Yes, Steve, that's the other thing. A lot of researchers are saying that they think that when Bigfoot is is moving between the dimensions, there are these light orbs that happen. Whether, you know, that's, you know, in the paranormal field, we think if they're true orbs, it's indicative of paranormal energy. So maybe these same orbs follow these Bigfoot, you know, if they truly are interdimensional, which is what I feel. Or dust. Um, Here's one thing that was really interesting. Um, the, we went and went down to Fairbo and we went to one of our favorite places that we go to and stuff. Now, not too far away from that, um, there is uh, farmers say that there is a colony of um, 
of um, aliens, so of the, the greys. So one day when we went there just not too far long ago, was it like three weeks ago, Steph? Three, four weeks ago? So we're driving to it, and I looked, and there was something walking in the woods. And Steph, you didn't see it? No. I even, that? Which site was it at? That was at the, uh, just past the, the graves. Remember when I pulled, even pulled over and I said, you're not seeing that? I didn't see that. You didn't? Okay. I thought maybe you did. But what was interesting about that is that um, while we were um, at the grave part, uh, and it was dark out. I mean, it was black mm-hmm. out there and mm-hmm. stuff. That um, all of a sudden, this drone came yes. out of nowhere. And yes. everybody at first thought it was UFO. And but then I'm looking up. <laughs> yeah, everybody. I remember Mark yeah. and, and Russ were so, Russ with the C, by the way, uh, was so <laughs> pumped on it, <laughs> was so pumped on it being a UFO. And then all of a sudden, you can see a landing light flicking. Flick, they're uh, flashing on and off a red light. And I went, no, that's not a UFO. That's definitely right. a drone. But thinking to myself, why would a drone be out there? And this was a very large drone. It was completely square that was up. Um, it was really big. So It was big. And it kept kind of hovering around, too. You know, yeah. it was really eyeballing the place. I'm not, yep. not sure who was running it. But, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of spooky, actually. And then when I peed on the side of the car, that was still kind of hanging out there. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, you know, when you got to go to the bathroom, you got to go to the bathroom. What can I say? Yeah, and everybody was very respectful and staying away from you until I had to go. <laughs> like and then everybody, everybody was, everybody was like, the coming car. out. Here's the thing. Couldn't they go out away from the car? I don't understand. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> This is some of the stuff that happens when and you're. And then out. we had an EVP that said we'll call her grassy or something, wasn't it? I mean, that something EVP like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, Shauna, <laughs> you got to get your butt up here so we can do a uh, a uh, uh, well, we'll call it the Para X tour. Yes. You know, get everybody that's, uh, um, you know, like even people that listen in. Um, you know, or people that do a show, get them all together and have a lot of fun. You know, I think that would be great. It would Is be. Is to say she peed on the side of a car? Well, I didn't pee <laughs> on the car. I peed off to the side, you know. I, I kind of used it normally if I'm in the woods, you know, I kind of lean up against a tree while I leaned up against the car. But, you know, the thing is, everybody was hanging around. It was like, you know, can you guys go across the road at least? I mean, for God's sakes. But anyway. Yeah, and even Bear's <laughs> not allowed to do that. <laughs> yes, Shauna, we should definitely do it. It'd be great. I mean, we still got to get, we're still trying to get an investigation together that's halfway between where she's at and where we're at and kind of do it. I think that'd be kind of fun. I think it'd be great to have all of us, um, you know, and listeners, too, that would like to come with. What's and, down uh, that way? What's down that way? Is oh, my like, God. Missouri. All those are Missouri, around there. Missouri. They're like, yeah, well, we should look for some, some place that we can do that. I think that would be yeah. super fun. Exactly. That or even a place that uh, is, you know, pretty much out in the woods, like down by Faribault, you know. And, yeah, Steve, yeah. you've been at that place we've been down there in Faribault. I remember you came with that one time, yeah. Or maybe even twice. Let's get into it, Sean, and see what we can find. You know, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of places in Iowa, but Iowa's probably too far for you, too, right? So, Missouri. yeah, well, we can go in Missouri or Kansas. Yeah. You know? Just make sure everybody keeps the spiders and the snakes away from me. Jeez, Jerry. Just calm down. I hate spiders and snakes <laughs> and, and mice. Well, okay then. I know. Uh, yeah, Steve's been down there twice. What's that? Steve's been to Faribault twice to Walcott Mills. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Why was so, there? What's why? Or I was there. I'm misery sure. loves company, but it's also the show me state. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So you get a flash? Uh, no, I don't know. Anyway. Um, let's don't get too off kilter here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, there's a song there, Cat. I know. Um, 
so yeah, this is, uh, you know, um, you know, I, here's the deal guys. I was going to try to do the show by myself tonight. <laughs> I talk too fast. Yeah. Imagine that, huh? Everything would have been done in 17 minutes. Yeah. And then I would have been like, okay. Um, what do I do now? What do I do? Who I wants to talk with me? I think it would be super hard to carry a show off by yourself. I mean, even for Heidi and I, like I did a show once without Heidi wasn't there and I didn't, we didn't want to do a show run or rerun right after the new year. So I invited um, the Cryptovania guys on because I knew they would carry the show for me. Cause, but even with that, I was like, just <gasps> scared. Cause I had, to, you know, I was in charge. <laughs> I kind of like to have that other person there too, you know? Um, oh yeah. It's scary. It's yeah. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't do that. But, you know. Though I have to say though, in the early years, um, I used to do that. You did. Uh, yeah, I did. And I was pretty happy with myself, but I wish I had some of those shows. I mean, whoever got into my uh, thing actually deleted so many really cool mm-hmm. shows. So, you know. Well, they'll get their comeuppance. Uh, their what? Comeuppance. What is that? Okay. Karma, baby. Karma always returns the favor. So they they change them into muffins? No. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard comeuppins before? No. Come car muffins? Comeuppins. You'll they'll get their comeuppins. You've never heard that before? No. Mm. That's stupid. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So let's see. I dreamt I get hit by a large fair D ba- lance from under the bed. I don't know what that is. A large a large fur D Ferdy Lance. What the heck is that, Moofy? Uh, come, oh, you come up and. Yeah, Listen. I know what you're saying now. What did you think I said? I have not a clue. That's like I'm still trying to see what Moofy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, dreamt, come up and not I got come a up bit and of <laughs> large Ferdy Lance from under my bed. But I'm stuck on that now. That's in my brain. I can't get it out. Anyway, do you see it? What is I that? It. I don't know what it is. Well, I love you. Explain in English, please. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind. Nerdless <laughs> laughing. So Casey and I have been watching this movie, this TV series on Netflix called Ragnarok, and it's a Norwegian TV series. Are you serious? You guys are have finally watching it? it? I've been one. I was the one that told you to watch this. It's really good. Well, I thought you said it was the movies you were watching. This is an actual no. series from yeah. Norway, and they speak in Norwegian, but they have English over it. Yep. Oh, it's wild. It's it's really the wild. it's supposed to be um, Edda. Edda. But the thing is, there's no such a place. No, there isn't. No, no. because but Edda is in the Ragnarok Ragnarok prophecies, you know. But there's no place in Norway called that. Yeah. Um, now cats having pictures of snakes on here. Yeah. Thank you. Very little. The Encyclopedia Britannica. (laughs) Yeah. She's trying to get me to cry. Nasty toxins. Yes, 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 yes. But, ah, crazy, crazy talk. But yeah, so paranormal, (laughs) paranormal in the woods is everywhere. Um, and you know, here's the thing. We're never going to find... Dogman, Sasquatch, any other cryptid, unless we're out in the woods. You have to be in the field. You know, if you're yep. a researcher, you know, like even, you know, Matt Moneymaker and all those guys, I remember when we first started out, he said, listen, there's no right or wrong way. You just have to get out in the field. You have to be out in the woods. You have to be there or you're never going to find anything. Right? So, right. That's true. That is true. And you have to love the woods, right? You can't do this if you don't love to be in the woods. That's the other thing. But I think it's interesting that we're finding that we find so much paranormal there as well. You know? And these lights along Bigfoot, that's interesting. I don't know what they are. Right. It's so weird, you know, lights. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's the whole, it's funny is yeah. that the, uh, the planet itself really throws off a different thing when you're out in the woods when it's dark. Yes. 
I mean, it is, you feel everything after 15 minutes. Yep. Your eyesight gets so much better after a half an hour, you know, when it's that yeah. dark and everything. But all your, so, like you said, your, your, all your senses are heightened, right? So, yep. and it's scary. I mean, let's be real. It is a little, it is a little threatening to be out in the woods at night alone. Yep. Oh yeah. Ticks, skeeters, all that Water fun stuff. Ticks. Yes, yes, yes. That season's coming up, and usually squatchers try to stay out of the field the whole month of July because there are horse flies and deer flies that you know chase the car for God's sakes. Much less chase us out <laughs> down in the woods. I mean, we'd be bit from head to toe. <laughs> they kind of like uh, nibble on the tires a little bit. Yes. I mean, they come in hordes. It's actually pretty scary, you know, and and holy crap. But, you know, wood ticks are a nuisance for sure. They don't bother me as much as those flies, you know. I mean, wood ticks are going to fall off and whatever. But, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. That's what I think. But <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time a couple of horse flies landed on my horse. And Dad says, well, just, you know, kind of shoo it off there. So I went to go shoo it off, and I got kicked in the shoulder. Oh, my God, did that ever hurt. So those things really do bite, especially bite if it's hard. Gonna... Yeah. It chunks the skin out of your body. Yes. We, you know, we just, oh, man, the things we've endured out there. But then we've learned and say, okay, we're not going on the field at all in July, unless it's, you know, a place that's not water, you know, swampy and stuff. But yeah. You know? And the ticks are really terrible. I went up to Red Lake one time and I was walking through the woods uh, with a couple of friends of mine at that time. And um, he was actually standing behind me, picking the ticks off of me and splitting them they in love half. You. They oh, love my you. God, did they ever. <laughs> it was just terrible. And to get them completely off me, that's when uh, duct tape was used. And it was like pretty much gone across my shoulders and down by my legs and stuff and there must have been oh my god at least a couple hundred you know walking around in the woods they're horrible uh let's see what is that now i have nearly knocked uh myself off i'm just trying to kill a deer fly on my head yes <laughs> yeah i'm not sure terrible. why they even exist really i mean what you know what do they do? I you know what? what? When you're flailing at them and everything else, I wonder if a deer fly is looking at you going, why does she exist? Why does she exist? Right. I you know, know, is that all she does is slap the thing? Right. Mm -hmm. It's a Minnesota thing. No, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> no, everybody goes does a little dance when they're out there. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why. What is it? What is it that you're supposed to wear? Lots of DEET. Yeah, I won't wear that, though. I think it's bad for us. It's, car it's a carcinogen, for God's sakes, you know? Yeah, but still, you you kind of need it, you know? They or just make... stay out of the woods at that time of year, you know? I mean, yeah, or there choice. should be, like, a deech shirt that you can yeah. wear, you know? Yeah. Seriously, you know, soak it in a big bucket of deet. Anyway, well, we're coming music. to the end. Yep, the music is the plan. You know, Sarge plays a really good guitar. Can you hear that? He does, doesn't he? She does. Oh, he's a and great guitar. drums and a bassist. Wow, he's just multi-talented. All right, everybody, I want to thank you very much. Steph, thank you very much for uh, helping out that Kim wasn't here and everything. Um, it was a lot of fun. And thank you all in the... Um, in the chat room, you know, each one of you have a special place in my heart, and I know in Kim's, and in Steph's heart, too. Um, so, hey, oh, Steve, send me an invoice for, for some spray. I need some. Um, but anyway, thank you all very much. Thank you, Para-X. Thank you, Sarge. And to the troops that are listening tonight, God bless you guys. Alrighty, have a great week. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.